You're watching GM6 Drone Mapping. Today, I'm going to show you my five easy steps to creating a 3D model using Agisoft PhotoScan Metashape. And it may be more like five and a half. So let's just change it five minutes. I'm going to show you how to create a 3D model using Agisoft in five minutes. That I think I can do. Let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is open Agisoft in new project, select all my images, then drag and drop. If your images are geotagged, you'll see them all around here like this. If they're not geotagged, they will not show up until after you've processed step one. Make sure to click on this icon up here if you want to see your images. Otherwise, it'll look like that. All right, so the first thing is to go up here to workflow, align photos, and I'll start on high, which is not the default setting. Click on start or OK. Once that's finished, we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that the sparse point cloud has been created, you can see all the images are around here. And all I do is go up here and turn those off. And then you can take a look at everything. And if you notice this box around here, this is called the bounding box. If you come up here, you have different options. I'll resize it by going to resize region. And then you can grab a hold of the little blue corners here and move it however you need to. All right. So before moving on to the next section or to creating my dense point cloud, I'll come up here to model and then go down to gradual selection. And depending on who you talk to depends on the recommended setting for this stage of your 3D model. I will normally go down to reconstruction uncertainty, click on that, and then it'll automatically highlight the points. I recommend just playing around with this feature and then determining what looks best. So I'll set it somewhere in here, click OK. And then I'll come up here and hit the X for delete. And so it'll delete all of those points. This will help kind of create a better looking 3D model that's a little more uh, precise, won't have as much noise. This is the way of getting rid of what you would consider image noise, but it's your 3D model photogrammetry noise. All right, so next go up here to workflow and then down to build dense cloud. Here I'll leave it on the default setting, which is medium. And that's going to typically be the best setting. The dense point cloud takes longer to generate. So if you go any higher, you may be sitting there for a couple of days, depending on your computer specs. I'll click OK and that'll take a little bit. And then after that's done, I'll come back and move on to the next step. All right, so here's the dense point cloud. As you can see, it looks pretty good, almost like a picture itself. And the thing to keep in mind here is that your bounding box will be used to process anything inside of it. So you can either cut out the points outside this box or just leave them. When you put mesh on here, those will automatically get deleted or reclassified. All right, let's go to workflow, go down to mesh. And I'm going to leave it on default, arbitrary 3D mesh, medium and then click OK. That'll take a few minutes, and then once that's finished, I'll move on. This is the wireframe mesh, also known as your triangle mesh. From here, I want to put some texture on it, which will make it look more like a picture. So I'll go to workflow, go down to texture, and the default setting here is gonna be around 4,000, and that's equivalent to a 4K image. I usually go up to 8,000 because it'll give me more detail. But depending on the project, you may not need that detail because it also creates a larger file size. So I'll click OK. Once that's done, we'll go to the next step. All right, so now it has texture on it. One thing I'll do before it's finished is I'll go and cut the mesh out because I don't need these buildings around the side. Then 
it's now finished and I can export it and then that's it.